for that warm welcome you've given me here in Japan. In recent years, the alliance between Japan and the United States has grown stronger, deeper, and more capable as we work together to take on the challenges just as important as the opportunities of a rapidly changing world. A great example of this, uh, we viewed Japan's lunar rover just coming out here, over out here before, uh, after lunch. A symbol of how our space cooperation is taking off, looking toward the moon and to Mars. And I'm excited. I'm excited the work we'll do together on the gateway station around the moon and look forward to the first Japanese astronaut joining us in the mission to the lunar surface under the Artemis program. And tomorrow, we're going to meet with our fellow Quad partners, Australia and India, for our fourth Leaders' Summit and our second time meeting together in person. The Quad is showing the world that cooperation among democracies can get big things done, and I'm grateful for your leadership. And thank you for bringing us all together again to keep driving our progress as we advance a positive vision for the future of the Indo-Pacific region. Today, we made several uh, commitments to further increase our bilateral cooperation and to work together to ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific that creates opportunity and prosperity for all the people in the region. Through our comprehensive and reliance, excuse me, and resilience partnership, which we uh, announced last year, we're in a situation now that we've invested uh, our cooperation to spur innovation while delivering concrete progress for our people. Promoting a secure 5G network, improving internet connectivity for our partners in the region, improving critical infrastructure, and strengthening supply chain resilience, particularly on semiconductors, batteries, and critical minerals. Responding to COVID-19 and building a greater health security and stronger health system is also part of the future. And helping the world prepare for the next pandemic with our new CDC regional office right here in Japan. Cooperating on clean energy and decarbonization to tackle the climate crisis. And after this, the United States and Japan, together with 11 other nations, will be launching the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. This framework is a commitment to working with our close friends and partners in the region on challenges that matter most to ensuring economic competitiveness in the 21st century by improving security and trust in the digital economy, protecting workers, strengthening supply chains, and tackling corruption that robs nations of their ability to serve their citizens. You know, the, uh, two, as the two largest democracies, the two largest economic economies uh, in the democratic world, the United States and Japan are demonstrating the strength of democracies in action. Our cooperation has been particularly vital in organizing the global response to hold Putin accountable for his brutal war on Ukraine and his attack on the norms and principles that are the foundation of our international order. Mr. Prime Minister, you've been outstanding. You've been an outstanding partner throughout this crisis. And our unity in the G7 to impose economic costs on Russia and support the people of Ukraine is sending a strong message about our willingness to defend a rule-based international order. And I'm looking forward to continuing our discussions at the upcoming G7 summit in Germany and returning to Japan next year in 2023 for the G7 summit. And I welcome the Prime Minister's announcement the G7 summit will take place in his hometown of Hiroshima. Today, we also discuss ways to continue to strengthen our security cooperation. The United States remains fully committed to Japan's defense, and we welcome, we welcome the opportunity to work more closely together in an increasingly challenging security environment. I applaud Prime Minister Kishida's determination to strengthen Japanese defense capabilities as well. A strong Japan and a strong U.S.-Japan alliance is a force for good in the region. I support the peace and stability that's going to uh, continue and we hope to increase across the Taiwan Straits promote freedom of navigation in the East and South China Seas, and to deter the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. So thank you again, Mr. Prime Minister, for your partnership and your friendship. The alliance between our two countries is stronger than it's ever been, 
and it's as important as it has ever been. I'm looking forward to exploring even more ways that our relationship will help move us toward a future that benefits all people. So thank you very much, Mr. President, and I really, truly appreciate your hospitality. Thank you very much. We will now accept questions from the press.